The first thing to do for using preparing your radix is to put a battery. You need only one. You can put two batteries, but one is okay. Then, before beginning a measurement, you just press this button on, and you will wait a few, a few seconds. Then the radix will go on measuring beta and gamma radiation. Each time a beta or gamma radiation is entering the tube here, you see a black sign appearing for a very, very brief moment here. And then we have to wait for a full cycle which is composed of four sub-cycles and the counting cycle will be finished when you have a square appearing in this part of the screen. You also have to check the unit. The good unit to be used is microsievert per hour which is written here and if it is not in microsievert per hour you can use the menu here to make some changes and use this arrow to go up and down in the menu section in order to change units. So you would have to choose, press the button Choisir, choose, and change from microsievert to microrem. Microrem is a ho an old unit which is no more used. Now we use microsievert per hour. You also can change the, uh, the sound. You can let the sound sound or you can decide not to have any sound so you can change it. All this is explained in the, the leaflet which is given with the, the radix. So usually the best thing when you make measurements in the environment or on different objects is to make static measurements. For example, you decide to check radiation at this place, you put the device on the function on and you wait for a few minutes so that he really finishes his measurements and you write down the, the value then you press the button off and you go somewhere else you can decide to measure the radiation one meter above ground or on the ground. You just put it at the place where you want to make a measurement. You press the button on. You wait for a few minutes so that it really finishes a good counting cycle. You write down your measurement and you press the button off. One other important thing is to protect him against contamination. For example, when we made some measurements here in the laboratory, all the samples were put in plastic bags so that the becquerels that are inside the sample cannot get out of the plastic bag. That's why I wear no gloves. I can touch the sample and no becquerels are on my fingers. I can put my device on the sample and no becquerels can get out of the sample and enter into the device. But if I was in the environment near Fukushima, I may receive contamination from the air. In this case, some particles, radioactive particles, could just settle on the surface of the device or even enter inside the, the device. And that's why it's better to protect him, putting him in a plastic bag that you can just close like that. And in this case, you can still use it. You can still make measurements, but there is no risk of contamination of the device. I mean, when you go back in a non-contaminated place, you just can throw away 
the bag in a group of plastic bags that you will use for, for a, a sort of special bin.